So I've got Dr. Uh, Dr. Adam Lerner here. He's been with us for a while. Doctor. Oh, that's doctor. right. Uh, well, is it just Adam, I'm an okay. So, so I've got uh, Adam Lerner here, and I'm, I'm going to uh, go over some questions. But I want Adam to tell a story a little bit. So when, when we start, uh, what, tell us a little about yourself and really sure. what, what the challenges were that brought you here. Sure. Um, well, you know, you may remember, but when I uh, first came to FPC, at the time, you know, my wife and I had been in practice for probably 13 years or something mm -hmm. at that time. And, um, and we, our practice was a combination of acupuncture and functional medicine. And we built the practice up to a place where it was, you know, you know our peers thought it was real successful. Mm -hmm. And our income had gotten to a place where we were comfortable. But, um, but for a while, I had been feeling like I was just trading my time for money. And it was, it was maxed out, you know, and I, and I was starting to feel burned out. And then we had a, you know, a crisis hit the family and my wife was diagnosed with cancer. And that changed everything, really. Uh, and it caused me to reevaluate everything. And I knew, I knew that something had to change. I had been looking at FPC for a little while, but I literally made the call to FPC f on the way home from the hospital. So, so when you say, okay, now the crisis hit. Yeah. Crisis hit all of us, sooner yeah. or later. So when you say that crisis hit, where you were, why did you say things have to change? What position were in where you, where did you want to go? What do you mean by that? Well, I didn't want to always have to be, have me and have my wife having to be working Got you. 100 percent okay. balls to the wall all the time just to be at a level of comfort. Okay. Uh, because I didn't see anywhere, I didn't see that it was possible to go anywhere else from there. Okay. And also, uh, it also became more clear to me that I wanted to focus more of my time on the functional medicine side of my practice. And I didn't know how to build that piece, how to expand that piece. It was, it was a part of my practice that I was offering to my current patients here and there, but I, I knew, I, w I felt called to, to increase that, that piece of it because of my experience with my wife. So just to be clear on things, because some, some, some of our prospective doctors I think most people are familiar with the term, but sometimes it gets complicated. And I think what we're talking about here, when we say functional medicine, because you're an acupuncturist, we have cardiologists, we have chiropractors, we have endocrinologists, we have psychologists, but that part of the puzzle, just so everyone's clear, is taking a proactive approach exactly. to dealing with the underlying cancer, the underlying heart disease, and working with your your, your client, your practice member, yeah. with a lifestyle and stuff like that. That's, That's right. It, okay? That's right. <clears throat> and, and my experience with my wife, um, it just it redoubled my commitment to that and, and to offering that to more and more people. So, no, knowing that was a path that you had more confidence in to help, help your wife. Help my wife, but also, you know, what I realized was that, this, that I had a whole functional medicine approach that I was using to help my wife. Yet I realized that, uh, you know, I was treating lots of cancer patients at the time in my regular practice, and they weren't getting that type of care going the conventional path. Right. And I just felt called that I, I needed to offer that to them as well in, so in maybe a much there, bigger maybe, way. Maybe there was a big purpose behind it. Big time. To move you into your purpose. So um, how's things turned out? Uh, unbelievably. Yeah. I have. Yeah. 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 You've, you've, you've worked hard. Yeah. I've, been, I've been watching. and. And you've you've made a tremendous leap in your practice. You can talk about that. Sure. But I know you always talk about the impact you've made more than anything. But how, how things turned out? Things have turned out, uh, you know, super well. You know, um, our practice was doing pretty well before we started. But we just finished our second year. You probably know, and uh, our revenues have grown by over a million dollars in in a single year. Uh, well, I know I know you're doing something like that a year, right? Oh yeah, no, we you're were doing, doing seven figures a year now. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, we were doing about a half a million before, and we, we finished last year over a million and a half. That's, that's phenomenal. And you've been with us for how long? A little over two years. A little over two years. Yeah. So, number one, we do see that with our clients, but I, I want to say thank you because you make us look good. All we can do is be the coach. Just like when you're working with your practice members, who, who gets the results? They do, That's right? right. You right. have to be the coach. And, right. and doctors understand this, and, and all of them do that come to us, they understand that they can't just be the treater, at least the kind of doctors that seek us out, because they know they want to be proactive. We can't treat someone until they're healthy. We can't give them enough supplements, give them, we have to support their lifestyle. And with coaching, what you did is you had the courage to realize first and foremost, 
you knew what you didn't know. Right. You were a great doctor, just weren't a great entrepreneur. Right. And it took a crisis in your case. Would you, would you take that crisis back? No. Because it would put you back, right? So right. we go through these crises, and, and when, we're, when we are, are looking at things as extreme ownership, we look at those crises and say, who's gonna benefit from this? How many people can I change a life because of the crisis that hit me? People don't become masters of anything, and, great, and, and I don't think people have greatness without having those crises. I'm proud of you because you, you took that and ran with it, and it affected your entire family, and now you've got a practice that, and by the way, you're, you're doing these kind of numbers. You must be in this really, really big city with all these people. How, <laughs> how many people are in your community? Uh, uh, we're fairly, fairly suburban, rural. You know, this, the main city where our office is, is 20,000 people, and... So, you know. so in a small area, and I know you have some surrounding yeah, areas, yeah. but maybe what, 70,000 at most or something? Something like that. Something maybe. like that. So do, do you think that you need a really big, <laughs> it's, no. and you don't have a big practice or anything, but do you feel like you're more than a doctor now? Do you feel like maybe your responsibility is more? You know, the, th the thing that I, I didn't expect this when I started, mm -hmm. I really didn't, but the results we're getting with patients now you know, the really transformative results where people's lives are changed forever. I mean, it's literally like 10 times what we were getting before. And, you know, you can't say how good that feels. So, so it's not just the money. Of course. But without money, we, we spend time in our practice trying to earn a living. Now you're developing wealth. Right. But you're impacting lives at a whole other place. And when you get to that, I mean, are you, that's your purpose. Would you ever change it at this point in time? No, of course not. Now you're on it. I believe that most doctors have the purpose. I do. And I believe they have a huge heart, no matter what their background is, traditional, whatever. But the system is so broke that it breaks doctors, it breaks practices. And when you guys come here, I know there's some skepticism. I know there's some, some resistance because of what we've been told. What were some of the fears or resistance? Because I, I don't know, maybe you just said, I'm in. I, I don't remember. But I, I imagine you had some fears. What were those? Well, I mean, I imagine everybody probably does do. on some level, you know. Uh, you know, what if it doesn't work for me? And, um, you know, but, but honestly, at the time, I, maybe it was just where I was in my life. I was really ready to, to make a change. And something in me, something in me just sort of trusted that if, that if I did make the change that it would kind of shake out. I'm not sure what it was because I did have all, all those, you know, all the thoughts that you would expect, right? Um, but with the amazing thing about it is when I just sort of leapt in and went to work. You jumped. I jumped big time. You and, um, but you know, one of the things I tell people <clears throat> about FPC is literally uh, everything that was promised was delivered. Thank you for that. Yeah, which, and, and you don't get that in many places, right? You don't get that in many places. So, well, and we teach you guys to do the same thing with your clients. Right. It's, called, it's called integrity. That's right. And that's what allows us to grow and <clears throat> you know, having the courage to move. And I tell everyone this, do you, do you see, obviously it took work. I never did. I, and I told you guys up front, entrepreneurship, owning your practice isn't for everyone. Not every, everyone loves the idea of success. Not everyone's willing to be committed. There's, I've never met a highly successful entrepreneur in any business that hasn't put the effort in. I've never met a married couple that have really going on that haven't studied each other and been, you know, worked on the marriage and so forth. Good things take time. And when, when we hear things like, well, you know, Dr. Lerner, I know it worked for you, but what if it doesn't work for me? Can you see what we teach? And again, we're not for everyone. Sure. But if someone puts the time and effort in with the, the basically the, the laws of entrepreneurship and the pillars that we teach, and can you think of any doctor that this wouldn't fit? Wow. I don't because I think everybody has strengths that they can bring to bear. That, that, that can make this successful, you know? And I think the thing about, that has been so helpful for me is that there is a real system here. There's a real system and I don't know when I started that I could have foreseen the things that I, where I would grow and where I would improve that would, uh, that would have allowed me to kind of do what I've done. But it's because of the system with FPC and, and the training a, and the a, coaching and, uh, you know. It's a great point because we know that 94% of failure, yeah. they, you know, I didn't come up with this, but it's not having a system. And I, I totally hold on to that, but I, I, I'll take it a different, I'll take a different step. 
the majority of all failure is not having a committed attitude and yeah. the courage to move through those fears. That's so right. if you were talking to other, there's, you know, people watching this that, that need to move through those, what would you say, um, what, how do they move through those? What would you say about looking into FPC and possibly working on this team, working with this team? Hmm. Well, I mean, I feel like if something in, in them tells them that, it's, that there's something here for them, Take it super seriously. Good. Be, yeah, take it super seriously because um, because the system really does work. It, and I don't know that before I started that I, I could have imagined that I would be comfortable doing talks and speaking with people and all the different components. But um, but because I you know because I plugged into the coaching and I got yeah. the support and I that that it, it actually all worked and. Uh, Do you enjoy speaking and teaching and empowering people? Yeah, way more than I ever thought I would. It's nice. Yeah. And then I, I think that's what doctors are supposed to do. I think so too, teachers. yeah. So, man, I really appreciate your effort. Thanks for making this look good, and thanks for sharing, man. Hey, Charlie, appreciate thank you. it. Thank you, Adam. Yeah. Thanks, buddy.